Hello my fellow duelists, Spaceman Jew here. I'm back at you guys with another video. So today I have my very first, very first ritual deck list for you guys. And it's the voiceless voice. They just came out not too long ago. And this is my first ever ritual deck. I normally don't like the mechanic because it's really convoluted and it takes a lot to, to do. But this deck is very simple, straightforward, easy to the point. Just very streamlined. Especially for a ritual deck. It's just it's very easy and I like it. So your your three cards there are there are three cards that are important. Skull Guardian, Sephira, and Low, right? These three cards are important. They kind of will make the entire deck go, right? The deck is really small. There's not a lot of cards in the deck, right? Um if you just really, you know, put a deck in, it's not a lot. You know, it's not as big as like Utopia or Elements are here, right? It's not as big as you know that art type. But so, anyways, um, let's go over our hand traps. And, you know, just our staples: Maxi, Ash Blossom, Call by the Grave, Infinite Impermanence, Dark Ruler No More, and Harvest Feather Duster. <clears throat> Optimally, uh, you want to include uh, Cross Out Designator. Me, I want a Dark Ruler No More. That's just me. I have a lot of extravagance in here, just for consistency. Right, and I, and sometimes it just could be used for bait, right? And then Harper's Feather Duster because opponents have bullshit back row. And then, you know, Empire, Call by the Grave, Maxi, Ash Blossom, all great cards that make every deck better if you put them in there. Like, there's no reason for you not to have these cards in your deck. Maxi is the best hand trap. Ash Blossom, Connors, Maxi, Call by the Grave, Connors both, and if and the Permeus, Connors, you know, Monsters, and Lock Style. Collars. So, um, Divine of the Hero, Divine of the Hero, right? This card uh, is important because if we don't have low, we can get low into our hand. It's a little combo that we can do with that. And then, on that, if we do have low at hand, we can still normal summon this card and then um, we can send Elder Entity, Guru, or Hero for the different effects, right? Elder Entity destroys a card, Guru draws a card and hero searches a card um, a ritual spell or monster from our deck so there you go that's why we have that card in here um, and like i said it also special summons low from the deck if you don't have low in hand right um now a really 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 strong card is Sabaris the ancient and ascendant and the reason why is because what's not printed on this card is a once per turn so if you have like three of these cards, you have two on the field, one in the hand, or two in the hand and one in the field, it becomes ridiculous, literally, right? Because you have a target protection and its first effect, and then you have a special summon negate and uh, its second effect. And it's not a once per turn. And what's most importantly is what also what is also not printed on the card at its first effect. It says when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a monster, not a voiceless voice monster. This is any monster that you control. So theoretically, you could use this card in any deck just to discard it for the negate activation. Literally, you could just use this card. There's no downside to it. I believe that they're going to ban this card eventually or like limit it or semi-limit it because this card has so much potential it could be used freely in any deck. It protects any monster of any arch type. It doesn't matter. So just think of just think of the potential. If you have, you know, one in hand or one in the field, right? You you discard it, right? That's one effect. You got your target protection. And then on in the on the field. On a special summons a monster, you return it to your hand, you get the second effect, and then the first effect is ready to go again. So it, it becomes deadly, and then especially with Savaris the Dragon's Sage, it's easy to get a copy out. Um, you can have it's easy for you to have one on the field and one in the hand due to this due to this card, or two in the hand and one in the field due to Dragon Sage. It's ridiculous. That card has a lot of potential within this deck. Um I'm including one because I've played Safira the uh, Divine Dragon. Now you don't have to, I like to be versatile in the way that I play, which is why I have Harper's Feather Duster and I also have one of uh, the voiceless voice traps. Uh, 
Radiance, and Guardian. Because I like to be a little bit versatile. And besides, we have a ways where we can, you know, we can add these cards back to the hand with Blessing. So they're not really pressed for, uh, pressed to have copies, you know, multiples of your spells and traps, right? Because you have a way to convert with current. Um, extra deck, right? We already went over the first three. We have Burn the Flood. In this case, we can make it off of our uh, Divine Herald. Typhon, because it's just like the new Zeus. Um, when we can rebo, Secure Gardener, Lower Liquid's Anima. The reason why we have these is because low is level one. Uh, IP Masquerada and L Lena the Light Charmer. These are both good level two cards. Both have different various effects. Um, Down Mondo is really, really important. This is a card that you absolutely need in your extra deck. I mean, absolute need in your extra deck because you can just end on this card, right? You can end on this card. It just takes uh, two monsters plus a ritual monster, right? So you can just end on this board and end on Down Mondo, right? And during your opponent's draw phase, tribute, tribute Down Mondo, target uh, Skull Guardian. Special summon Skull Guardian, lowest special summon herself, and then you can get Barrier, Radiance, or whatever, whatever voiceless voice spell trap that you need in that moment. And there you go, all in your opponent's draw phase, which is really, really important. And really, really, it's, that's really strong to play in your opponent's play during your opponent's draw phase. Most people don't know how to interact with that, right? So that's really it. The deck is very streamlined, straightforward, easy to play. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, comment on this video, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I do upload new videos, share this video, and as always, peace.